Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome everyone back to another exciting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. A little bit of news today. We got lots of things to talk about, but uh, first of all, I guess I should let you know that I hunted down, I found him, he was playing a banjo in the woods of the Appalachians. Mysterious Mike has returned. Hey, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I got I got lost over there in, in, in the Appalachians. I was looking for the what? What are those? Uh, the blue people or whatever? Have you the heard blue about people. that, dude? Have you heard about that? They're like group of people that are like blue skinned or something. I don't know. It's in that Smurfs. Yeah, yeah, Smurfs. Or is it the uh, Avatar people? Yeah, I'll, it could be Avatar. What? What are those people called? Um, the what are they? The oh crap! I'm gonna screw it up. Like the NIMBY or something, right? Dude, that that might be right. Avatar people. I'm gonna my shit's picking all that up, but Oh man, you're typing? Yeah, you you didn't even notice, did you? Ha ha. Who are blue people in Avatar? See, it's not even showing it up. Or it's like humanoid speed Navi. Damn it, I was close. Oh yeah, Navi. you were. Yeah, Navi. Yeah. I was damn close. I said uh what? Nimby, I think. I was close. Yeah. I got the letters right. Okay, so you're out playing with the Navi in the forests of Appalachia with your banjo, and were you making people squeal like pigs? No, no, that it's so much harder than they made it look like in that movie. So I, I, I was just I didn't have enough concentration to be able to do it. Oh, okay, fine, whatever. Make up your excuses. All right, so I guess, Mike, I, I sent this on to you. I posted it on our Facebooks. For those of you who don't pay attention to our Facebooks, which you know I think all four of our listeners do, um, we actually made it to a top 40 list of podcasts. How? I have no freaking idea. Who runs the list? I have no idea either. But uh, I got an email about it from the founder. The website is known as Feedspot, and here's a little thing about how they picked the best 40 movie podcasts you must subscribe to and love in the world. Not just the country, the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm so humbled. Uh, that's really cool that we, we got selected. I mean, we're number 40, but we'll take number 40. Yeah, we're dead last, but... We're not 41, and so that's all that matters. All right, so here is their criteria for their ranking. The Google Reputation and Google Search Ranking. You're welcome, Mike. Influence and popularity on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media sites. Again, you're welcome, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I suck at all that. Yep, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Quality and consistency of posts. I guess that's both of us, but again, I do all the website, so Yeah, that's I'll get all you show. doing I'll get you doing something other than talking. Yeah, I get a participation award, right? Like we're like millennials. No, we are not millennials. I am not a millennial. I'm a Z Menial. I don't know if you saw that floating around on the social medias recently. No, I didn't. What is a Z Menial? Yeah. It's anyone born between the years of 77 and 87. Oh. And this person had this whole thing written out and everything, and it, it was kind of interesting. I don't know if it'll catch on, but they, I don't know. They okay. put out a meme about it. I'll, uh, I'll look into that. Continue on. Okay, and here is their last and probably most important criteria for making it onto the best 40 movie podcasts on the planet, Feedspot's editorial team and expert review. So that means they at least listen to our podcast. Oh, yeah, man. So we have like, what, what is our subscriber level? Like like 10 now? No, no. We're at least at six or seven. Dang, dude. We're rocking it. We're it's blowing a- this shit out of the water. Yeah, yeah. 
I really would like some more hate mail or something. We've only got that. You got that one thing, right? On on what was that on YouTube? You got ripped? it was on the YouTubes. Yep. And what's funny is I think that person is still our only subscriber on YouTube. Nice. Which is even funnier. I don't know. I haven't checked the YouTubes in a while because you know it auto populates everything. Yep. Once again, another thing that you did. Well, it does it itself, just like uh, Twitter. Like it posts to Twitter. I haven't checked Twitter in forever, which is the one I probably want to try and get you doing is Twitter, because you don't have to have an account or any of that shit. You just post. Oh, okay. So I just I think if we if you can build our Twitter base, that would be good. Yeah, just tweet face it or whatever, and then you know, yeah. s- snap dick it, and it's all good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can combine the two. I mean, everybody loves to snap dick and tweet face at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, I think they do. Um, that's what the kids do, right? I don't know. I don't know. You're closer in touch to the children than I am, uh, Mr. Married Man. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, I did get married, and uh, that was that went very well, and uh, thank you. I didn't say congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I will you uh, poor, read poor between. Bastard. I will read between the lines <laughs> and accept your congratulations. All right, fine, fine. You can have it. All right, so, Mike, what else should we do? Oh, people need to send in suggestions for legacy casts. That's another thing I have here on my post-it note. See, I didn't take notes. It's one note. It's a post-it note. So we definitely want to start getting more people sending in some requests for Legacy Cast because as our consistent listeners, all four of you know, thanks Patrick, Mom, you know, the usual, uh, Maniacal Mags, I think she still listens, right? Oh yeah. Now that you're married, she doesn't have to listen anymore? No, no. She listens. She listens. Oh, okay, good. So suggestions, send in your suggestions because the Harvest Horror Fest is over. We have a list of suggestions, which we will decide one for next week. But send us in your requests on movies you want us to review. Yeah. So that's one thing. So to uh, get back on track after all our newsy stuff, I got a few other things we could talk about later for future podcasts and things. We'll see how we go. But, uh, Mike, is the Mercury rising? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, it is in this movie. Uh, we're we're going to be reviewing uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, and it's a lot of it focuses on Freddie Mercury. Sweet. Bohemian Rhapsody. This is that movie about that band that one time. Yes, essentially. Yes. All right. All yep. right, so Mike, go for it, man. You're already rolling. Give us the rundown on the Bohemian Rhapsody. All right, so Bohemian Rhapsody is uh, starring Remy Malik, Lucy Boyton. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna screw it up. Uh, Gilliam. Oh, hold on. Lee. <laughs> ben Hardy. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Deep breath. All right. Break off break off the rust, man. Break off the rust. It's uh, been a week and a half. Yeah. Uh directed by Brian Singer, although he was fired and I'm not sure who the other director that replaced him cuz it's not credited in IMDb. Um writers Anthony McCartan and Peter Morgan and the screenplay was by Anthony McCartan. And the synopsis of the movie is a chronicle of the years leading up to Queen's legendary appearance at the Live Aid 1985 concert. All right, Mike, since you're already talking, you get to go first. What did you think of Bohemian Rhapsody when you went and saw it with Maniacal Mags on your mini moon that was over a week long? Uh, I I liked it. I I I liked most of it. I guess my only thing that I wanted to see a little bit more was I wanted to learn a little bit more about Freddie Mercury. But the movie is supposed to be about Queen, and it essentially shows the beginning of Queen. 
the group, although it does fl- focus a lot on Freddie Mercury's uh, life and, and all the different things that happened over the years, building up to the Live Aid concert that was a phenomenal scene. Uh, I felt like I was at the concert. It was a lot of fun. So, Well, and you know that scene... The Live Aid scene, they shot the entire Live Aid set. I don't know if you know this, but you can go on YouTube and they have it out there, the whole set. And you can watch it on YouTube as it was shot in real life. But the Live Aid set, when they shot that scene for the movie, they shot the entire set. And they only gave us, you know, what, three songs, four songs, something like that? They left out two songs, I believe. Yeah, uh, I believe it was it was supposed to be a twenty minute set. Yeah, it's a twenty minute long what, set. Yeah, yes. what, yeah, what everybody was playing for the the Live Aid thing, and um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know they shot the whole set so they could like figure out what they were going to use later, what worked better in the movie and stuff. Yeah, well, and that's one thing that people are speculating that hopefully on the Blu Ray release there might be a cut with the entire set. Yeah, I really, really like that scene. Of course, I l- love the music by Queen. So seeing that, that was, it was, it was kind of like fun. It it was good to see like all that stuff and kind of see some of the the origins. I don't know how accurate everything is with the the origins of of everybody in the movie and stuff, but it was it was pretty entertaining. I mean, there was lots of drama and and different things and um. Yeah, I I like this movie. I thought it was was good. I looked up some of the history and some of the facts and things like that. Yeah, they fudged a lot in this movie. A whole lot. But uh, one thing that I think... I think the last scene, the Live Aid scene, possibly could have been better because the Live Aid scene in the film was literally the first scene they shot for the movie. And so the guys... weren't really gelling as much as a band actors, things like that. It literally was like the first day on set and they shot the biggest scene of the movie. Mm. Yeah. That might not have been the best. uh, um, I guess who would make that call? I guess the director ultimately makes the director. Yeah. That would, would have been Brian Singer that made that call. Yeah. Cause uh, I know, um, I know way back. uh, This is just a call out to a specific movie, but I know in uh, alien, uh, part of the reason the scene with the alien bursting out of the chest is so good is uh, everyone, that was one of the last scenes they filmed in the movie, and everybody already knew each other. And so he just kind of said, like, you know, hang out like you're you're eating dinner with your friends or whatever. And they were all more like friends because they had all been doing all these scenes and stuff together. And it just comes across more natural, you know, in that in that scene. So that that would have helped, I'm sure, for this this scene as well. Yeah, I think it would have helped make it a little bit more magical. It was magical in his own right. It was a very good scene, but I think it could have been better. And then, you know, not to not to start griping a little bit, but I, I guess I will. I felt that scene was a little long because they did like full three or four songs, which it's about 15 minutes, give or take. And that's kind of long to spend on one scene. Granted, it is like the, the cap of the film and, you know, it's the most pivotal moment and all this stuff. But still, I feel it was a little lengthy. I would have rather have seen them do every single song, but like maybe a minute or two of each song instead of having the entirety of songs. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I I can agree with that. It did seem just a tad bit long, but I still really enjoyed the scene. So I kind of let him, you know. I mean, obviously, oh yeah, they it was did. fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. probably the possibly the best scene in the film. I would think. I don't know. I mean, Rami Malek, he killed killed it in this movie. He just killed it. Yeah, no, he he was really good. Um, that and that would be one of my complaints of the movies. I wish I just knew a little bit more about the history of of uh, Freddie Mercury. Um, his actual, I guess, his real name was uh, Farouk something. I don't remember what his last name was, 
but he had changed his name to kind of have like a stage name, something easier for people to pronounce. So, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I, I, I liked the movie, but I don't know about all the fact stuff. Um, I guess, I guess you looked up some things, Matt, so you can. I looked up some and we'll, we could touch on it when we get more into the spoiler area of the podcast. Cause I don't want to, granted it is a biopic. So everybody knows Freddie Mercury died of AIDS and everybody knows that Queen broke up at one point. Well, not really broke up. They kind of all did their solo album things. And so, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of that that's common knowledge, but still, for those of you who don't know the story of Queen and haven't seen the movie, I don't want to ruin too much of it for you. So we won't worry too much about that, but, uh, I really enjoyed this film, much like yourself, Mike. I, I found problems here and there, much like yourself. Um, I, I like that they focused a lot on Freddie Mercury, but I also like that they didn't... I mean, I don't like that they didn't introduce more of the band. Like, the bass player, um, uh, John Deacon, just kind of comes out of like the middle of nowhere. And what's interesting is they actually shot an entire scene of him being introduced and joining the band and, you know, his kind of origin story into joining Queen. And they cut it completely out. Like, he just magically shows up. Oh, well, yeah, that would have helped with some of the... Yeah, because he did just kind of show up. Like Right. Yeah. And that's one thing I wish they would have done more. I Granted, Freddie Mercury, like, you don't have Queen without Freddie Mercury. I'm sorry, you don't. He's that big of a deal in this band. But I still think they should have focused a little bit more on the band and maybe given us a little bit more behind-the-scenes stuff of Freddie Mercury and more about his life and more about the band's life in general and everything instead of kind of doing these big montages of shows and music. And granted, it is a, a film about a band, and so that's almost like a given, but... They didn't break the mold with this movie at all. It's very, I, I hate to say generic, but you know, you you have these band movie tropes, and this movie hits every single one of them. You know, every single one of them. You know, you got the band meeting, you got them kicking out the singer, you got them bringing in Freddie Mercury, you got, you know, them meeting their record label guy, you got them fighting with the record label guy, and oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, okay, it you has know, all that, and and it did. Uh, I was talking with Maniacal Mags after we watched it, and we also noticed that we wish some of the stuff was l like it was a longer movie already, and maybe that's why I think it was it was run times like two hours fifteen minutes or two hours yeah, twenty minutes something like yeah, that. It's, it's just um, over two hours, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we would have liked to have seen more of the queen like because you're right they kind of just montage and go through a lot of stuff real fast and you're not exactly sure where you're at in the timeline of what year it is and stuff like sometimes there's some years mentioned here and there but it's like it wasn't super clear of like where they were and how well they were doing i mean sometimes there's there's things said but it it wasn't always real clear what was going on and right. it was very right. fast on some things. Yeah. Like uh when they met their new um oh hell. Um I don't want to say producer, their new agent. Um the dude that's in uh Game of Thrones. Uh what is it? Uh oh, oh uh, uh, Aiden, little little finger. Yeah, Aiden Gillen. When they met him and he became their agent, now this is where the a little bit of history comes in. Um, in the movie, they make it seem like Queen was no one at that point, which is not true. When he came on to be their agent, they were already touring in a big name band at that point. They weren't massive like we know them today, but they were touring Europe and England and places like that when they brought him on. And I think they had already toured Japan or they had just signed up to tour Japan. And that was a point that he made is that we need to get you to Japan and tour over there. And they make it seem like he was a much bigger influence on the start of Queen than he really was. He he helped build a starting band into a powerhouse is what the history really is. Yeah, and it didn't explain how 
all that went down, like it, it, in the movie, it almost seemed like, I guess this isn't too much of a spoiler, but it almost seemed like they were nobodies and then they were superstars overnight. Blink, yeah. Blink yeah. of an eye. And I don't think it was quite like that. No, no, I don't think so either. But you know, it is, it is, they're trying to tell a very big, complex, multi year, almost multiple decades story in two and a half hours. Yeah. You yeah. know, that is a hell of a challenge. But I think, you know, I think there's some things they could have cut back on, and there's some things they should have had in there. That's, that's my thoughts. So, all right, Mike, before we get going uh, too hardcore on this, because I could tell both of us are itching to just talk about it extensively, especially spoiler ridden. Mike, I'm glad you're back because I don't have to do this again. How does Bohemian Rhapsody relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh man, I'm so glad you asked, man. Um, the Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, so I had I had a little bit of a, a tougher time finding this. This movie seems like it was made in uh, the UK mostly, and they don't seem to shoot too many movies, uh, Marvel movies over there. But I was able to find uh, in the makeup department uh, Charlie Hunslow, who worked on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor The Dark World. Uh, both as a makeup artist. Nice. Nice. And dude, that's one thing that for sure was crazy. I watched uh, HBO has a uh, first look uh, on Bohemian Rhapsody. For those of you who have HBO streaming or just HBO regular, look for it. It's about 10 minutes long. And they go behind the scenes a little bit. This was all before it actually came out. But you can you can find it and look it up. Oh, that's cool. And one of the things they were pointing out is that the wardrobe, granted that's not makeup, but makeup is a major part to the wardrobe. Um, the wardrobe that they had for just the main characters, just the main members of Queen, filled an entire bus just by itself. Wow. Just the wardrobes. That's how many wardrobe changes they had. Like they showed a picture, they showed like a, a video of it in the wardrobe room. And it's like almost a warehouse just full of costumes. It was it was impressive. Wow, man. I mean, it had to have been. It seemed like they were always wearing something different. Uh, every single shot, there was some kind of different something. Yeah, it, it was amazing. All right, so Mike, let's go and just crack it wide open. There's your warning for spoilers, even though we probably spoiled a majority of the film before here, but whatever um one that does kind of bother me and i know they did this for dramatic effect being hollywood and things and this is a historical thing that i looked up today um everybody knows freddie mercury died from aids yeah he was not diagnosed with aids until after live aid so he didn't know he didn't tell his bandmates and even when he did tell his bandmates, he didn't make it public that he was dying of AIDS until literally the day before he died. Yeah. Um, I mean, that part makes sense, but I didn't realize that. So they, they told it out of order. Yeah, well, they added... To they, add drama. Yeah, to make drama, to make Live Aid seem so much bigger. Like, another part of Live Aid is that... Um, and this was in an article I was reading... That Queen had not was not broken up when Live Aid went. You know, it wasn't the first time they played together in a while. They were actually on tour together when they were asked to play Live Aid. Oh man! So okay, so they they pulled some Hollywood stuff there. Yeah, they pulled a lot of Hollywood stuff. Granted, it helps with the movie. It definitely helps with the movie. So I'm not going to slam them on that, but. If you're trying to be historical, which again, it's a movie, it's not a documentary, it's a biopic. They're not going to, you know, they're going to make it, they want you to feel something. And they succeeded. Yeah, so, well, well uh, I guess since we're we're spoiling it a little bit. Oh in, yeah, dude, we, we did the MCU, we warned them. 
Yes. Go for it. So, so in in the scene where he's telling his bandmates he has AIDS, he also tells them that he's not going to tell anybody else, and that he just wants to focus on the music. And I I think that was probably true, because like yes. you said, he didn't tell anybody he had AIDS until right before he died. So, um. I think people suspected he did, uh, but uh, he he never, I guess, confirmed or, or said anything about it. And I thought that was kind of cool because that is – he in the movie, he said he, he didn't want to be the poster boy of AIDS because he's a you know, famous person and all that. He just wanted to do the music, and I thought that was really cool. He just, he just wanted to do what he loved. He didn't want to have to deal with all the bullshit of uh, – trying to be like a a star who has some disease, you know, so. Right, right. I thought that was neat. I thought that, I, that was a really dramatic scene, but it was cool. Well, and, you know, n- I guess uh, not to get too controversial, but a little bit. What What are your thoughts if Freddie Mercury would have been like Queen would have come out now? Or say the late nineties. Are you are you cracking open some more medicine there, Michael? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Man, it spikes on the the, the recorder when I Oh yeah, dude, it. I hear it. Yeah. I hear it in my ears. It burns us. Anyways, so okay. I'll ask my serious question after we're, you know, done talking about you cracking open an IPA. Um if Queen would have been a band, say, when you and I were in middle school and high school in the 90s, do you think there would have been as much controversy surrounding Freddie Mercury and his sexuality of being a homosexual? Because that seemed to be a very huge, hot topic in the 70s and 80s, when, especially when Queen exploded in fame. And they allude that a little bit in this film during the press conference. You know, Freddie's sitting there trying to just talk about the band and the music, and all anybody wants to know about is his personal life. Yeah, I think it would be less of a deal, but I think it would still be a big deal. We we love the drama of famous people. Like, look at these like Kardashians and all that stuff. And I know it, they have an it, entire freaking TV show just dedicated to chasing down celebrities and their personal lives, which still to this day really bothers me. Yeah, and 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 yeah, they have uh, what is that paparazzi show? Is that the one you're talking about? The uh, yeah, TMZ. Yeah, TMZ. I can't believe that's a show because it's essentially yeah, it's just ridiculous. people stalking people, and they're like bragging about it. On TV, like, it, ah, just the whole concept blows me away. But, um, yeah, I think it would still be a big deal. It, it might not be as much of a, a topic about him being uh, a homosexual, but more just the crazy parties and all that yeah, stuff. Cause... I think that's still... Whether he was homosexual or not, I, you know, if he's got all these crazy things happening and late night parties and, you know, with different people and stuff. Yeah, that, that I think it would still be talked about quite a bit. Yeah, especially the partying. And I mean, they showed, you know, one of his parties and there's lots of Easter eggs in his party, too, and stuff. So that was that was kind of fun. You know, that was that was a crazy ass party. Yeah, it was. All right, so um, what else was I going to talk oh, about? Oh, this oh movie? spoilers, spoilers, um, dude! We already got the spoilers. No, no, well s- alerted. So, so um, I was sitting there, and uh, this is the scene where they're talking to some record executive guy. I guess who produced? I don't oh, know who paid for it. Are you, and, are you and, talking about Mike Myers? Oh, dude, come on! Ah, uh, did I ruin it? <laughs> yes, you ruined it. I, I I was I I leaned over to my maniacal mags. I'm like, is that Mike Myers? And she's like, oh, it is. And then like from then you can't unsee it. All I saw was Mike Myers, and then it was funny because or ironic, very ironic, because he was telling him no one would headbang to this song, 
And yeah, it's, they and, put and, that and, line specifically in there that no one would ever headbang to this song in a car. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, and, and I loved it because it was a callback to Wayne's World. But it, I, I mean, wow! Uh, once you saw that it was Mike Myers, it was hard to unsee him, and I was like, oh, it was a little, almost a little distracting. But I do like Mike Myers and. Just the other day, I actually was like, man, whatever happened to Mike Myers? He hasn't done anything in a long time. Dude, they actually had that line and everything in the final trailer for uh, um, Bohemian Rhapsody. I put it on our uh, website for this podcast. Oh, awesome. But, yeah, no, Mike Myers is, I mean, he's doing stuff. He's not doing a lot. Like, you know, they announced uh, Austin Powers 4. What? No way. You didn't hear about that? No. Oh yeah. Yep. I it's you... rumored it's rumored that he's gonna be starring in it, but they announced the film. So Man, it'd be cool to see another Austin Power Austin Powers, especially if it's a creative like all the other ones were. Yeah. He's mostly been doing the Disney stuff. That's where he's been. He's been doing cartoons and you know, Shrek and Oh yeah, I guess he's been the voice of Shrek for all these 45 Shreks and all that. There's, yeah, there's been a billion freaking Shreks. And then he did uh, that uh, Love Guru in 2008. Oh, yeah, but that I was I never awful. even saw that. That was, was it bad? awful, yeah. Ugh. And then let's see. The, there's some something here that says Terminal. I don't know what Terminal is, and he's in that. The movie with Tom Hanks? No, 2018. Oh, all right. Well, I don't know what that is then. Yeah, neither do I. I don't know if it's out yet. Uh, hold on. Does that have a date? Man, May sh- twenty eighteen. So yeah, we, it came out. I never we, even we, heard of it. We we sh- we're, we're bad film nerds. We should have known. We're horrible film nerds. Uh, uh, you know, we should go back to fake film nerds instead of real. Oh yeah yeah. I have to buy that URL now. Damn okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike, so we could sit here and rant forever on this movie because both of you are very both of us are very passionate about music. Uh I don't know how passionate you are about Queen. Uh I really enjoy Queen. Uh I hadn't heard a lot of Queen growing up at my uh at my parents. Uh, but when I went to college, uh my one of my roommates was a huge Queen fan, so I listened to a lot of Queen and really liked him. So I have I think I'm a, a a decent fan of Queen. Uh I'm sure it would have been amazing to see him live, especially when they're in their prime, but um you know, that's not going to happen. I I'm not a super huge fan of Queen. I don't own any of their albums, not even a greatest hits album. I kind of wish I did, but I have always enjoyed their music. I've always enjoyed Freddie Mercury's voice. I think the whole band is incredibly, incredibly talented, especially their uh, lead guitarist. Um, oh, who is it? Uh, Brian May. Oh, I- yeah. I've always thought Brian May is just incredible. And, you know, I have a list. I don't know if you have a list going in your head of people that, or bands that I wish I could. If I had a time machine, I'd go and try and watch them. And I definitely say that probably the whole Live Aid concert, I would love to have been there, you know, in that big giant, you know, stadium. I think that would have been amazing. That's one I would love to travel to. And then, you know, I'd also like to see Jimi Hendrix live and I'd love to see The Doors live. And oh, the yeah. list just goes on and yeah, on. Yeah. There's lots of very talented musicians i wish i could have seen you know elvis i would have loved to have been able to see elvis at least once oh, you yeah. know in his prime yeah so um oh i got an easter egg for you mike that i bet you didn't even freaking notice all right go for it i probably didn't it involves one of your favorite bands and your mother's favorite band oh um okay so there's uh the there's a flag or something waving in the, in the Live Aid concert that says something about you too. I love you yep. too. I think yep. that's what you were talking about. Close. Damn it. I got one better. When 
Queen is getting ready to go on stage and they're going through the bowels of the uh, venue of Wembley Stadium. They pass by a bunch of guys getting off stage. And the bunch of guys that are getting off stage are actors dressed up in the same outfits with the same hairdos as you 2 when they performed at Live 8. Oh, dang. I was close. What's interesting, though, historically... Um, Queen didn't follow uh, U2. I think U2 went either earlier or later in the day. I don't remember. Oh, but so it's just something that... It was just a shout-out to U2 in this oh. movie, basically. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Interesting. So, all right, Mike. I know we can sit here and rant and rave and talk about this movie all day long, but I know... Our four listeners probably are already sick of us because we're rolling up on 30 something minutes. Okay, that's true. So, Mike, since you've been gone, you didn't make it to the podcast I did on Tuesday by myself. No. Which don't. Did you listen to it? No, I haven't had a chance, man. Of course not, you dick. Yeah. Sorry. I listened to your solo podcast only because I had to edit it. Yeah. And it was like five minutes. <laughs> I still want to listen to it. Um, I got a, almost a full half hour by myself. Don't ask me how, but I did. Man, that's a lot of talking. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And it was on... Uh, I don't know if you ever saw the movie. I actually watched it on the plane uh, when I was flying out there. Not when I was flying back, when I was flying out there. And I still kind of remembered it. But it was uh, Last Flag Flying. No, I don't know if I've seen that. I thought it was just a straight up tributary. And then when I watched it and I was looking up the see if it was released in the theaters, it was it was released in the theaters on November second of twenty seventeen. And so I briefly remember it being in the theaters here for probably a week and then it was gone. But it was a uh, Amazon Studios original. Oh, okay. And it's uh for those of you who haven't listened to it yet. It was our last episode, episode 62. It's a very serious, serious film. Very serious subject matter that's starring three comedians. So, Oh, nice. It's uh, Steve Carell, uh, Brian Cranston, and Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, yeah. You told me that you, you wanted to see that movie. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. And they, there's some humor in it to help alleviate some of the the serious subject matter because it is about death and death of a soldier and things like that so anyways if you're interested go take a listen episode 62 boom all right all right so mike since you've been gone go for it how many reels do you give bohemian rhapsody so you know i said a few things about that i didn't like but overall i actually enjoyed this movie and i i love the music part of it and stuff so I'm going to give this one four reels out of five. Uh, it's a little bit higher than I tend to go, but I, I just enjoy the music and, you know, I liked it. Damn it, Mike. Damn it. You got the same one again? No way. Of course. Of course, dude. I, you know, I had issues with this movie, but overall, I think it's a very good, entertaining film that is a must see in the theater if not for the film itself, at minimum for Rami Malek's acting, because if he does not at minimum get nominated for best actor, he should, oh man, I'm going to be mad. Cause he just, he embodied Freddie Mercury. If you ask me, he did such a good job. Yeah. I, I know he worked really hard for it. Cause I mean, all those different kind of mannerisms and all kinds of things. And, uh, it, it looked like, you know, he, he put his heart and soul into the, the, the acting for this. Yeah. Don't now don't get me wrong. The rest of the actors in the band and then, uh, the, uh, Lucy, uh, Boynton, I think is how you pronounce it. Yeah. Who played Mary Austin. She did a phenomenal job. But they don't compare to what Rami Malek put out there. I mean, he just 
Wow, such a performance. I mean, right there, that boosted it up a whole reel just for me. Because he did just such a good job. He really did. And then, of course, the music. I mean, the music is huge. And it's all the original tracks and songs and things from Queen. And then uh, you really have a nice, you know, the concert settings. Even though, you know, they have uh, lots of montages and stuff for a lot of the concerts. They... They do really feel like you're at these shows. So, yeah, yeah, I thought they did really well with that, especially the Live Aid um concert. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, a lot so I mean, I you know, yeah, I have issues with it. I know you have issues with it, but overall it's well worth seeing this movie in the theaters. It's it's a great film. It's not an incredible film. It's not going to set the world on fire. But if you like rock and roll, if you like Queen, even if you don't like Queen, go see this movie. It was it was very good. I, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, definitely recommend seeing it. In the theaters, the sound was a lot of fun. So you will get a really cool effects if you go at the theaters. I think even better than surround sound or, or you know, their their surround sounds better. So it was cool. It was very cool. Yeah. So if I didn't say it out loud, I give it a four out of five as well. But yes, it's uh, it's a phenomenal film. I, I enjoyed it. it. It could have been better, but it also could have been a hell of a lot worse. And it seemed like a lot of the critics were very divided on it. And I don't see how, but oh well, whatever. All right, Mike. So do you have anything else you want to add today, sir? Uh, yeah, so uh, for a teaser for next week, or I don't know what we're going to review, but uh, I wanted to mention that we will be talking about the Matt's Cinema Movie Pass in the next oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. Cause I totally we, forgot about we've that. We've kind of gone a little bit long, so we'll save it for the next one. But Oh, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, Cinemia. Uh, Cinemia. Oh, you bastards. Yeah, uh, yeah I... Yeah. <laughs> so it's always fun to hear Matt's drama with these different services. So oh, yeah. I, you know one okay, you know what? I could tell you what we probably should do for our new one next week because I've already seen it and I paid for it with my Cinemia Pass is uh Overlord. And I know you like horror movies and it's a horror movie. Okay, so we will do Overlord. Uh I know also there's this this Harry Potter world one coming out as well this weekend but uh Dude are you seriously going to make me go see that shit? Uh I don't know we'll talk about it but uh we will plan to do Overlord for next week early next week. Well we have two we have to do next week so I was thinking of doing Overlord Overlord and one of our uh uh legacy casts or tributary casts but dude oh, if oh, you're going to make heard, me see um, that shit you know. No, dude, I heard the this uh, Netflix movie, so maybe we should do a tributary uh, that they just came out with. It's like something king. It's like about oh, Scottish. It's, lo- it's supposed to be awesome. Yeah, the new one with the... Uh, oh, damn it. Not Chris Pratt. I'm forgetting his Chris name. Chris Pine. Chris Pine, yeah. The, one, the new one with Chris Pine. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of ads for that shit. So, hey, maybe we'll do that. That could be fun. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me get the right name before I uh, ruin everything. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I am going to remind our listeners that the Prescott Podcasting Network is what I've what I've deemed it, and we actually start our own Facebook group. But uh, make sure to listen to our sister podcasts. You know, there's a uh, Rogues Radio by my buddy Dave Beatty. If you're into comic books and especially the behind the scenes world of comic books, you know, tune into his, uh, he's, uh, been a comic book artist pretty much almost my whole existence. He's phenomenal. He's worked for all the big guys. He talks with other people in the industry. It's really cool. Um, don't forget to check out, uh, my buddy Scott Orr's podcast, which is uh, code three. He talks all about anything and everything you could ever imagine, with the fire department and EMTs and emergency services, he talks to the guys, he talks about equipment, he talks about everything. And that might be real interesting right now, especially with all these California wildfires. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, I have to give a shout out to my boys over at the Blue Milk Podcast. If you love Star Wars or you just like lots of random ranting about the most insane Star Wars to- topics you can find, make sure and tune in to the Blue Milk Podcast. They've talked about... 
the food of Star Wars, the music of Star Wars. If you can think about it, they probably have discussed it and somehow related it to Star Wars. Okay. Uh, those sound great. Um, and last, last oh, oh, but not you, least, oh, Mike, yeah? last but not least, we have to throw out Mr. Mile High Show. Matt Santos's Mile High Show. That's super localized music, comedians, all that stuff. He's the reason why the real film nerds even exist. So make sure and listen to the Mile High Show as well. Okay. All right. And uh, then uh, SignalAZ.com as well. They have us all over their website, so we need to give them a little shout-out too. If you're looking for the local news, entertainment, fun of the Prescott Valley, Prescott area, SignalAZ.com. Woo! I know that was a lot. Sorry, all right, Mike. All right. All right. So you're, are you ready for the name of the, the Chris Pine movie that is Yeah, on? what is... It's called what Outlaw is it? King. Outlaw King. What's it about? Do you have a synopsis? Because I know you probably looked it up on IMDb. Yes. Uh, which the real film nerds needs to be brought by. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It would be nice to be uh, sponsored by IMDb. Uh, love you, Amazon. All right. Uh, a true David and, uh, versus Goliath story of how the 14th century Scottish outlaw king Robert the Bruce used cunning and bravery to defeat the much larger and better equipped occupying English army. Interesting. So this is maybe a nice little addition to uh, Braveheart. Yes, yes. I, I I think it is the same time period. Well, yeah. Robert the Bruce was the king during the time of Braveheart. Well, he became the king during the time of Braveheart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, that sounds that sounds like that could be uh that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, my Outlaw King. Uh, yeah, my uh, coworker recommended it. Said we that I need to watch it immediately. So, uh, I want to watch it, and uh, I think it'd be fun for us to watch. And you know, we haven't done a tributary in a little bit, so that'd be cool. Yeah, I think we've only really done like one, maybe two. I think we've done two. Two. Yeah. Okay. Two. Oh, you know, another fun one that I watched. I don't know if you watched. It. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, Movie is a TV show is Maniac on Netflix. No, I haven't watched that, but I will look into it. That is a wild show, man. That is a really far out there, interesting, wild show. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, told to watch like The House on Haunted Hill. Uh, yes. It's a Netflix show. I haven't seen yeah. that yet, but I, I, I was told that's really good. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to watch that either, and people are just raving about it. Other podcasts, critics, even guys that aren't really into horror stuff are saying that that is just fantastic. Oh, and another one that I heard that is really, really good, now don't think this is weird, people, is the new uh, Sabrina that's on Netflix. Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Yes. Now, the original Sabrina with Melissa Joan Hart is kind of slapsticky and fun and not super serious. This one is really dark, really serious, very evil. I heard it's very good. Other than the fact that the Church of Satan is suing them, I heard it's uh, it's a really, really good, fun show. Interesting. So there's some stuff for people to check out. I'm I'm so freaking busy. I I don't even have time to watch the shows I want to watch. Like. The Good Place and The Big Bang Theory and stuff like that, let alone adding in new ones. Well, but yeah, I'm, 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 I understand. I am also or the fairly Walking Dead. Biz, busy. So, you know, The Walking Dead. I mean, I'm not even caught up on The Walking Dead, and they just had a major, major, major thing happen in The Walking Dead. So, well, don't tell me because I haven't Ugh. seen it, man. I'm so behind. I've, well, it's it's already out there in the world, but they basically did a massive time jump. Oh well, I don't. Well, don't don't tell me. I don't want to know. I'm not going to tell any more than that. But they, you know, it was because it's uh, either people really, really like it or they really, really hate it. There well, seems to be no middle ground on it. Okay. Well. So. Uh, all right. Well, with that, I mean, we're we're burning up the clock. So I'm going. I know. To... I know. You need to go get a refill of medicine too. No. No. I'm going to say, uh, you know, thanks for listening, everybody, and. Uh, We'll catch you next time. 
Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie.